What is up beautiful people? It's your boy Mizko here. Now in this video, I'm gonna share with you guys how to create these looping hovering orb effects inside Figma and also in Webflow. So it's a two in one, let's get right into it guys. Now really quickly, I'm gonna show you guys how to create these orbs very, very quickly. They look glossy, they look advanced, but really if I click onto one of these orbs, it is just a radial uh, gradient, as you can see over here. So to quickly show you guys how I created these, because we're gonna move straight into Webflow, so you learn how to build this, um, which is more important. I can go ahead and click on my fill, change the solid to a radial, and this is the trick. You just have to put in a bright color, right, for the center, and then you wanna choose a dark color, right? So I've got this dark navy, um, or dark, sorry, a dark purpley uh, color right here. Whoops, wrong one. So I'm meant to put this on the, on the other end, turn up the uh, opacity, and then I'm actually going to put the purple, right? The highly saturated bright purple in the center, and it creates this sort of effect, right? But it feels a little bit funny right now because the, the edges are blurred. So what I wanna do is I wanna move this point all the way to the top, somewhere around the top, as you can see here. So it looks like the light is shining above the orb and there is a shadow beneath it. All right, so that is the effect I'm trying to achieve. And you can obviously uh, tinker this a little bit more. You can pull the bottom anchor down a little bit to make the light look like it's being uh, pulled further away from the orb. So it creates a less of a dark shadow at the bottom, as you can see over here. Right, so that's how you create the orbs. And what I've done is I can, I've add, simply added a layer blur to some of them to create a depth of field. And ultimately what we are going to create is a new, uh, a transition where they are constantly moving, looping forever in infinite space. And it just creates some something nice and visually engaging that you can implement into your own portfolio or your client websites or whatever it might be. It might even be a blockchain, a crypto related project because they always use this type of effect. So without further ado, I'm gonna jump straight into Webflow and we're gonna start building this. So I'm gonna head over to Webflow and I'm gonna get started. Once again, I'm not gonna be covering the bare basics because I will be starting new videos uh, around Webflow, but we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna jump straight into it guys. So first off, I'm gonna go ahead and add a gradient background to the body. So I'm gonna go ahead and add it to all body pages. Um, I'm gonna actually change the image and gradient background. I'm gonna go ahead and change it to radial and then I'm actually gonna go ahead and grab the hex codes that I've already copied and pasted. And you can see that's the purple. And then we've also got the dark color, which will create that nice effect. So I wanna push this, dark, this lighter purple down to the bottom of the page, just like the design. You might not be able to see it because it's quite subtle in the design, but it's actually uh, around this area. It's not perfectly centered because it feels a little bit weird like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command E, and then I'm gonna put down a section. And this section is gonna be called the hero. And the reason why it's gonna be called the hero is because it's gonna contain everything inside the hero of a website. So imagine if we had a header here, this is the hero content, we might have a CTA or whatever it might be, and then we have the content beneath it. So this is gonna be the hero. And inside the hero, what I wanna do is I wanna give this a 100% width, so it's gonna contain, it's gonna span across the entire website, uh, entire viewport. And there's gonna be 100 viewport height. So this is always going to be fixed in 100% sort of 100 of the viewport height of the window. Then I'm also gonna set the overflow to hidden because anything, like the orbs, if they are sitting outside of the, uh, of, of the browser, I don't want there to be scroll bars. So we're gonna make sure this is overflow hidden and that's pretty much it. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command E again and then I'm gonna put down a new div and this div is gonna be called hero title, right? Hero title, yep, there we go. And the goal of this hero title is to center all the elements vertically centered on the, on the web page. So over here, I'm gonna hit display, flex, horizontal, I'm gonna align everything to the center, and then I'm also going to justify all the content to the center as well. So from here, I also wanna make sure that the height is 100 viewport height, so it's always gonna take up the full screen. And from there, that's pretty much it. So inside the hero, we now have a hero title that sort of will put any content smack bang in the center. So inside the hero title, I'm gonna hit Command E again. Whoops, Command E 
again, yep. And then I'm gonna put down a new div, and this is got this div is going to contain the title itself, right? So I'm gonna call this hero title box. So inside the hero title box, I wanna make sure I set the settings right, is that I wanna make sure that this is going to be position relative. And you'll understand why I made this position relative a little bit later on. And inside the hero title, I'm gonna hit Command E, I'm gonna put down a heading title inside. In the heading title, I'm gonna change the H1 headings or to clash display. This is a, just a font that I've implemented or up, uploaded and imported uh, previously. Maybe to change it to medium. And what was the title that we had? Supercharged for pros. So that's what I'm gonna put in. Supercharged for pros. Is that correct? Yeah, there we go. Is that H1? Let me make sure that's H1. Perfect, looking good, looking good. And I might just bump this up to maybe 48. Maybe we can make it a little bit bolder. Supercharged for pros, looking good. 68, let's make it 68, just for this example. Perfect, so that's looking good. So we've got a heading inside the hero title box. And now what I'm going to do is, I'm actually gonna go ahead and add in those mesh uh, gradient orbs, right? So inside the hero title box, I'm gonna hit Command E, I'm gonna put down a div, and I'm gonna give this a class name of mesh. And inside the mesh, I'm gonna give this a default height of 72 by 72 pixels. I'm also gonna make sure that there is there is a gradient uh, for this, radial gradient, and I'm gonna make sure that we get the right colors. So I'm gonna put in the purpley pink, and then I'm also gonna grab the dark hex code over here and put it on this section. So you can see that it's already coming to fruition. So I'm gonna make sure it's aligned to the top and center. And then the, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add a, a border radius to that. So 72. So you can see that 72 must align with the width and height of it or else it won't look as good. So from here, I want to make sure that I position this mesh over to the right hand side. So from here, I'm gonna give this a class name of mesh one and I'm gonna position this absolute and then I'm also gonna position it to the top right corner. So you can see here. The reason why it is positioned to the top right corner of here is because when you, whenever you position an element absolute, it has to be absolute to the parent container, the, the next parent container that is relative. So the closest parent container that is actually relative, as you can see here. If I change this back to static, this orb should move to the top right corner, as you can see right there, because as default, the hero um, or the body is actually set to relative. So you have to make sure that you remember to set your parent to relative. And then from here, I'm going to just simply move this orb to the right a little bit, right there. And that's looking good. So just want a little bit of, it's overlapping the text. So we've got mesh one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit command C, I'm gonna hit command V, and then I'm gonna give this a new class name of mesh two. And mesh two is going to be, I believe, 32 by 32 pixels a little bit smaller and it's going to be behind supercharged for pros. So I'm gonna make sure that this is positioned absolute and it's top left, oh sorry, uh, bottom left. And I'm just gonna tuck it over to the side a little bit. And one thing I forgot to do is actually give all these a Z index. So Z indexing is to help you layer your elements on a web page. So the H1 should be, should have a Z index. Let's just go, where's my Z index? Um, I've set this to relative and the Z index should be, let's just say a 100. The orb one should have a Z index of 200 because we wanna overlap it. And then the actual smaller orb, number two, we wanna give this uh, maybe 50 because it should be behind the text. So that's looking pretty good. Then I'm gonna head over to my designs again and I'm gonna have a, a larger orb that's gonna be around 220 pixels uh, width and height over here and then one large one that should be around 400 over here as well So let's go back to Webflow. I'm going to grab this mesh or this orb. I'm going to hit command C command V, right? I'm going to change the class name to mesh 3 and I'm actually going to move it outside of this hero title box, right? There we go And I'm going to move it over here and the reason why is because I want this to be positioned all the way onto the right hand side, right flushed to the end of the screen. So if I go to uh, position absolute and I go all the way on the right hand side, that's how I can control it. And I might just move this 
Let's just see. Let's just keep it 30% from the bottom and we might just move it a little bit off the screen. Now we also want to make sure mesh three is 200 or it could be any size that we want really, 220. That's looking good. We have to change the radius to 220 as well to make it all perfectly rounded. And we will also add a filter and we're going to give this a blur of, let's see, whatever looks good. Let's just say it's going to be 20 from here. And as you can see, we want to maybe push it further off the screen, just a tag to give it that depth of field. All right, there we go. Looking good. So we've got number three and then we're going to do is command C, command V, and we're going to replace this with mesh underscore underscore four. And what we're going to do is make sure it's outside of the hero title box. We're going to go ahead and position this all the way to the left hand side. So position absolute, position to the left hand side. We're also going to make this 400 by 400, as you can see there. Looks like a big purple SpongeBob. Change the radius to 400 pixels. And then I'm also going to go ahead and give this a filter and a blur. And we might have to bump this up to 40 just to make it feel a little bit um, more blurred. And what we're going to do is we're going to position it off the screen to the left hand side a little bit more. And then we're also going to move from the top, just position it off a little bit more as well. So it feels like a little bit, a little bit more abstract there we go looking good looking good so from here we've pretty much got all our orbs in place we've got our text in place now it's time for the transitions so we want to make sure that we've got everything correct so we have mesh 4 mesh 3 um, then we have mesh 2 and 1 or positioned correctly we also want to make sure that the hero title is also set to overflow hidden just in case there are any scroll bars because this these elements are outside of the page and from there, we should be pretty good. I'm gonna go over to my tra interactions. On Under interactions, I want a transition to happen when the page is loaded. So under the page trigger, under page load, we can set a new animation when the page finishes loading. So under that, I'm gonna hit action and hit start an animation. And I'm just gonna delete this old uh, test environment that I've created and I hit plus and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in orb animation for the title, it could be anything that you want. Under actions, I'm gonna hit plus, and then I'm gonna to start to hit move. So on the move, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I'm moving, right, or I'm setting the default state, the default location of where each orb is when the animation starts. So where I have placed all these animations, I want them to start at in zero X at zero Y on the axes. Why? Because I don't want them to be moving from the default state. So I'm gonna click on what the, the first mesh and I'm just gonna right click on this, change target, click on the first mesh and I wanna click set as initial state. So this will de default the state. Uh, on the X axis, I want it to stay where it is. On the Y axis, I wanna make sure it's staying where it is as well. So you can see when the animation starts, this orb won't be moving, it will be staying still. Then what I wanna do is I wanna duplicate this, duplicate this mesh and I'm gonna right click and say change target and I'm gonna click the other orb. So that's done, I'm gonna move that up and then I'm gonna duplicate another one and then I'm gonna right click, change target, click on the third mesh and then move it up and then I'm gonna right click, duplicate, right click, change target, click on the fourth orb and set to zero, zero, so that's all good and move it to the top. So now what I have told Webflow is that all four meshes at the default state, at the initial state, they're all gonna stay where they are right now. So I'm gonna highlight them all um, and just make sure that they're all set to zero, zero, perfect. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna highlight all these meshes or all these orbs, I wanna right click and hit duplicate. So what's gonna happen now? At this point in time for this mesh, the second one, oh the first one, sorry, as you can see it's also highlighted, I'm gonna make this change the easing to in and out, I'm gonna set the duration to two seconds and I'm gonna move this on the Y axis down a little bit as you can see here, 32 pixels, all right? And then for the second one, I believe it was this one, you can see that it's down here. I am going to make sure I change the easing to ease and in and out. And because it's at the same level, the same distance, right, as this one, because they're both quite sharp, I'll keep the duration at two seconds 
and I'm gonna move this one maybe up a little bit because this one's coming down. I want the animations to feel a little bit more dynamic and organic instead of having them all moving at the same time. So I'm just gonna do some random numbers at negative 24 at two seconds, right? Then I'm gonna click on this mesh, the third one, and I'm gonna tailor this one, make sure the easing is in and out. And because it's blurred, the blurring gives me an effect of that it's closer and our focus is on the actual words and the two orbs that we just modified. So because this one is closer, the animation should feel a little bit faster because it's actually further away from our focus point. So I might change the duration to four seconds and this one might go up a little bit more, but it's also gonna take a little bit longer to get there. So maybe we can do 160. And we'll just see what this looks like. And then for the fourth orb, as you see over here, I'm gonna click on this one and it's already uh, selected. I'm gonna change the easing to ease in and out. And I'm gonna make this duration, maybe I'll do six seconds, maybe, mainly because it's much larger, it's, more, it's further away, it's a little bit more blurred. It's gonna take a little bit longer because of the distance of, away from the focus point. And this one's gonna go down, let's just say, let's just have a play around with this, 200, all right? It's gonna take six seconds. So from here, I've got the starting point, right? And then I've also got the movement. So it's all gonna start moving a little bit, as you can see. But now we, don't, now we need that end point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select all four at the start. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate them and then move them to the actual end, right there. So now if I go ahead and click on save, hopefully if I click on loop as well, it's gonna go ahead and animate up and then it's gonna to return to its start default state. There we go. Now you can see that it jolts really quickly, mainly because if we go back into our animation, if I select on all the last four layers, we don't have any easing, right? And we also need to adjust the duration for each state. So let's remember this one, let's just make sure that these two are gonna be at two seconds. I'm gonna select these two and change it to two seconds. And then this one is going to be four seconds. And then the, the furthest one should be six seconds as well. So after I've done that, I hit save. If I loop this, you can see that the orbs are gonna be gracefully sliding in and out on the web page. Now I can see that some of them are a little bit slow, so we might actually speed up some of these orbs a little bit, just so they feel a little bit more consistent. See what this looks like. So there we go. So obviously that's how you can create these looping effects with your orbs. You can take time to play around with it, play around with the timing, play around with the distance, add more orbs, different colored orbs, do whatever you want. But this is how you can create those looping effects for your website. So hopefully you learned a thing or two in this video. There's a lot that you can achieve with just some filters, some blurring, some water radiuses on all these different shapes to really create these nice looking effects inside your website, your portfolio, or your, even your client's website. All right, guys, I'll see you guys in the next video very soon. What the?